Hey, it's Miley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for July 2024. Okay, so if you've already listened to the July energy forecast, the intro, the overview video that I've put out, then you already know that we are wasting no time coming into July and getting the party started. On July 2nd, we have two back-to-back energy shifts taking place that are definitely going to change the game. First of all, we have Neptune in his rulership in Pisces energy at a 29 critical crisis degree. It's very karmic in nature. Neptune is going retrograde. So anytime that Neptune goes retrograde, it feels very wonky because we just kind of went through the solstice energy. We just had karmic chapters be very disrupted so that we know which ones are ending. We know which ones are beginning. They may not fully have ended yet, nor have the new ones actually begun yet. And just as we are building a little bit of excitement, a little bit of inspiration to actually get the party started in a new path, in a new direction, with a new vision, with a new goal, with a new dream, Suddenly, now we are going to have to put things on pause. Why? Well, because Neptune going retrograde means that we have to put our dreams on hold. We have to really put that new vision on the back burner for just a second while the universe bitch slaps us, knocks the rose colored glasses off of our face, and now we have to deal with life. We cannot run, we cannot hide. We cannot curl up in a ball and just wade this out. We have to make the move. We have to boss up. We have to really tackle our lives, the mess that the old version of self with the old Roman reality had created. We have to clean up this debris. So Neptune in this Pisces energy, of course, this is, you know, where intuition is concerned, soul contracts are concerned, creativity, dreams, vision are concerned as well. There's this element where we may actually feel disconnected, detached, if you will, from our higher self, from our soul self, which is a very weird vibe because we are extra sensitive, but we feel like this detachment is kind of putting us in a situation where we're being abandoned by the higher realms, by our guides, by the universe, when realistically speaking, we're in exam phase. We need to walk the walk and talk the talk, not only because we're in the year of eight, not only because we have to boss up into new levels of power and control in order to activate our creator abilities, but because Neptune going retrograde is an opportunity for us to see whether or not we've actually learned anything. This is a time where we may feel that disconnect, that detachment from our higher self, from our guides, from the universe, in order for us to be walking on our own two feet, trusting our gut, trusting the previous tough love life lessons that we have learned, trusting the wisdom that we already have within us. So it is going to be a time where it can feel very confusing. It can feel very flip floppy. Again, indecision is the name of the game because again, we just just arrived at this new goal, this new vision, this new dream. And now we're being pressed on pause. This is a time we are going to see a lot of, let's call them tests, exams, in order for us to learn more about ourselves, integrating this wisdom, putting it into practice. This can definitely bring an element of disappointment, an element of feeling like you're constantly blocked every single time that you have an epiphany, that you have an aha moment, that you're finally ramping up and feeling good about life again. It can feel like a certain punishment, if you will, if you choose to adopt that perspective. I prefer to kind of look at it like, okay, we are in exam phase. And especially at a 29th critical crisis degree, we have to pass these tests before we see Neptune and side note, Saturn, who just went retrograde, they're both going to be moving into Aries energy early 2025. And that's essentially when we get a chance to rebuild our realms, our reality, and where the collective is actively going to be piecing together new earth, which means that we are at an ending phase, a closure phase, and it does not feel good. We are being tested in big ways. We are being tested to see whether or not the goals, the visions, the dreams that we just got illuminated to are actually strong enough in order for us to continue to focus on them while we engage in the cleanup crew. 
again, there are chapters, karmically speaking, that just fell apart that are still very much fragmented as far as the loose ends go. We have to wrap them up. We have to tie them up. We actually have to clear away the old in order to have the space, the time, the energy, the attention to start pouring in the new. Of course, Neptune is an odor planet, so this is a very subtle change in transition, but we are definitely going to be put in a very interesting part of this video game, of this playing field, to really, again, see whether or not we can trust ourselves while still feeling detached from the higher realms of intelligence and trust that the wisdom that we've already accumulated in previous Tough Love Life lessons are going to get us through this chapter as well. Neptune will be retrograde for about five months. So we are going to be smack dab thrown into eclipse season, having all of these major heavy hitting planets come one by one out of their retrograde. And then the forward motion will continue. So that is astro shift number one. The second one is Mercury the ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury is moving out of the cancer energy. Thank goodness, because I think I think we all deserve to stop looking back at the past and crying over spilled milk. I don't know. You can be your own judge, but having Mercury in that cancer energy, we were reminiscing the past too much. We were a little bit whiny. We were sitting in victimhood. Oh, whoa, poor is me. It's just not the best energy. Now, Leo energy is going to be a totally different ball game. First of all, it's a fixed fire sign. Fixed energy means that we get an opportunity to stabilize. A fire energy means that, first of all, the fire energy is going to dry us off from all of this sentimentality, all of this emotion, all of this romanticizing and nostalgia that we've been sitting in with this cancer energy. And the Leo energy is definitely going to push us out into the world. Cancer energy had us introverted because, of course, we were all like whiny, cry, messy type of versions of self. Nobody wants to be out in the world doing all of that. And so the extroverted energy that is coming from this Leo energy is definitely going to be a welcome change of mind. Now, Mercury... Again, not that I want to get too ahead of myself here, but if you've listened to the July energy forecast, the intro, the overview, you would know that towards the end of July, Mercury is going to be moving into his rulership in Virgo energy. And the reason why that's important is because Mercury in August is, well, between August and September, going to be going retrograde in his rulership in the Virgo energy and then sneaks back into the Leo energy before kind of moving ahead. So we want to pay attention, especially towards the end of Mercury's time in Leo energy. What's going on? Now let's talk about Mercury in Leo. So we have the ruler of the mental plane now set up in Leo energy, which is the heart and soul of the Zodiac. Leo energy is the most authentic energy of our higher self that we can align with. It is the soul and the spirit that needs to be animated and expressed through the physical ego avatar that this human body is here walking this earth plane to do, to bring the soul, the spirit into form. So first of all, Mercury and Leo energy, we're gonna be thinking big. We're gonna be thinking grand. There are gonna be some major ideas coming to us, especially with creative solutions to a lot of the problematic areas of our lives that we have just been banging our head against a wall about. The thoughts are big, the ideas are big because Leo energy is very grand, very grandose. It's a little bit extra, a little bit dramatic. Now, you know, we all have a new truth to kind of stand in. We all have a story to tell and Mercury and Leo energy, the storyteller of the Zodiac, is going to put us in situations to go out in the world and do just that. What's even better about it is that Leo energy really has us fixated. We have our eye on the prize. We have a certain goal. Yes, I know Neptune just went retrograde. We may have to back burner that goal, but it's becoming more defined in our mind's eye and our heart space. We may not have the pieces to the puzzle. We may not have the smaller details kind of in alignment on how we're going to reach said goal, but that doesn't matter. We have a vision. We have a goal. We have a dream that is kind of triggering a new happiness, a new excitement, new inspiration within us. That's all we need to focus on right now. 
We have been so immersed in the past and crying over situations that weren't meant for us anyways, that it's good for us to now focus on something that is getting our vibration up, getting our vibration to a point where we are excited to pursue a new path. So, of course, with Mercury ruling over communication, we are storytellers in this Leo energy. Considering the fact that Leo energy is ruled over by the lion, the lion is the king of the jungle, and we all know that the king of the jungle likes to, you know, belt out a roar every now and then to remind the jungle dwellers of who's boss, who's king, we are going to do the exact same thing. We are much more expressive. We are, again, a little bit of a drama queen, if you will. There's a lot of theatrics, a lot of storytelling, a lot of center stage moments that this Leo energy is going to be putting us into. And so there is this charm that we all get to tap into. We can convince, I'm going to say, um, we can convince anybody that our idea is the best. We can convince anybody to kind of team up with us to get to said goal we could essentially be selling you know ice to an eskimo at this point in time that is how persuasive leo energy is and so we're tapping into a new level of self-confidence of self-esteem we are definitely more out into the world than we have been the downfall is, is that because we want center stage, because we have a truth to tell, because we have a story that we want to share, we're not great at listening. And so we're going to have to actively, all of us, really put ourselves in a situation to realize when is a good time to speak and when is a good time to listen. We are also going to have to work very hard to not kind of, I'm going to say, shit on or dim the light in other people when they express their thoughts, feelings, and ideas. Because of course, we're going to think that our way, our goal, our dream, our vision is the best. That's just the energy that we're tapping into. So we're super, super confident. We're super strong about making some of the decisions that we've been on the fence about. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to move out into the world. We want to have some fun. We are definitely the leaders of our lives under this particular influence and we have no problem kind of managing ourselves managing other people in the direction that we all need to be walking there is going to be a high peak of this confidence that will take over in july as some of these smaller planets start moving into leo energy 